All right. It says it's live. So I'm, I'm looking down at my tech, as I'm sure you are. Uh -huh. Wow. And I can see us. Can you see us? That's awesome. I hope that, that other is. There's a bit of a delay, but you'd expect that. <laughs> and hear us as well. Exactly. All right. Hang on a second. Let me do this. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I, I can see us online. <laughs> and yeah. And uh, the sound is good. So mm -hmm. I can I, I just check the sound. So I think everyone can hear us exactly. Mm -hmm. And everyone's saying hello. Guys, give us a shout out if the sound's okay. Not that I can fix it. We'll have to rely on Lucy for that. Ten, ten people I can see. What <laughs> Evening, guys, whatever you are. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, good evening. Yeah, our, our colleague Karina, who says it's great. Thank you, Karina, yeah. for the confirmation. So I see that we have 15 people here, guys. Hello, and feel free to say hi in the comments section. You can also mm -hmm. write us where you are based now, uh, which country, sure. which city. We are I was going to say it could be the living room, the bedroom, the cupboard. <laughs> yeah. If you're lucky yeah, enough, yeah. have a garden, perhaps the balcony. <laughs> it should be good. It's a very nice weather here today in Brno, so maybe you are yeah. enjoying some sun. <laughs> Prague, is, Prague is good too. Prague is good too. Awesome. So we are saying hi to people from Brno, but also as mentioned in Prague, because we are streaming to City Spy Prague and Prague TV and also via our channel Foreigners Prague on Facebook and other cities across the Czech Republic. So exciting. we are everywhere. <laughs> like it. All right. So I'll start slowly. Mm -hmm. And anytime, guys, if you have some questions, comments, anything, just write it down in the comment section and we will answer and we will have a look and we will uh, get in touch with you via that way as well. So sure. I welcome you, Kenny, and also all the viewers here uh, at the first lockdown interview that we have launched. We decided to do this uh, talks, interviews with other people in this kind of dark period of time when all of us are still quarantined, let's say, still Hide, we hiding behind masks, <laughs> all that really good stuff. <laughs> Maybe you could have a Scottish flag, you know, like. Well, actually, strangely, uh, I, I decided I was going to use my ski mask and it is yeah. the Scottish flag. It, it yeah. is the small tire from, from yeah, Scotland. Yeah, yeah. perfect. You know? <laughs> um, although nobody has made face masks, uh, you know, with the Scotland branding, if you like, on. But I, I like the idea, though. <laughs> Any friend of Scotland, you should get it. <laughs> Any friend of Scotland is a friend of mine. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so Kenny Phipps, uh, as it was introduced in the Facebook event, is an expat who's been living in a Prague for a long time. It's been 17 years, right, Kenny? Uh, 17 years. I think this might be my 18th year, off, off and on. I've, I've been mm -hmm. certainly here longer than I've not been, if that makes sense. But I've traveled yeah. quite a bit. But I've made Prague my home for 17 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So you are you are almost like a local, you can say. Because it's yeah, I mean, there's, there's probably some obvious things. Lucy, we're going to go through my, my adoption of the Czech language after 17 years yeah. is probably still an, an ongoing exercise. But I, I yes, I'm I'm fully wedged in Prague in the Czech Republic. Republic. Yeah. I, I don't see myself going anywhere else. <laughs> I see. Well, Prague is beautiful. Uh, so that's why we decided to ask Kenny for the first interview, uh, because he can say how it looked uh, like in Prague before this lockdown long lockdown he, uh, he was there for a long time and now what is the difference I will mm -hmm. say a little bit more about Kenny that he loves coffee he loves tea he loves whiskey I believe <laughs> <laughs> and I promise you that's tea that's definitely tea it's, it's not whiskey <laughs> time, <just> time yeah. <laughs> And you may know him as well because he is the founder of the City Spy Prague, uh, a network that is trying to also get you to know Prague and its hidden places and give you the tips where to go, what to do. And he's been involved in Prague TV as well lately, right? Uh, more lately, but uh, some years ago as well. There's there's a bit of a story there, but we'll, we'll leave that for another time. But yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, Prague TV joined the so City Spy, Spy Network. Prague. 
Kenny. I just exactly. have that, that'll do for now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, and his favorite place. I asked him about his favorite pl place earlier, and he said that it's Naplavka in summer. For sure. And I, I look forward to getting down there. I think they've they've renovated it, so there's some new things to look at. But it's always beautiful to sit on the river in yeah, the spring yeah, and summer. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So that was just for the beginning. We have uh, already dozens of people watching. So we will start <laughs> with, the, with the questions. I have sure. the questions and we can add uh, the questions from our viewers as well. Sure. So my first question, Kenny, is uh, as we said, you've been living in Prague in the Czech Republic for a long time before this lockdown. Can you compare from your point of view what has changed now during the pandemic during the quarantine as it was before sure i mean i mean there's the, the, there's some obvious differences of course um i'm a big walking fan and, and and when lucy and i were talking about getting set up for this i i miss my walk so i but i i did i actually i was going to say for a long time i said you know stay home and this was the best way to go and we but we had no idea how long staying home would have to to happen and of course, over the course of, over the course of time, you got to look after your mental health. And and I thought I would be okay for the duration. And then I started to feel a little bit claustrophobic. You know, the walls are closing in. I decided that I would go out. And I walked all the way from where I am in Vinaradi. By the way, guys, welcome to my humble home. Um, <laughs> and I walked all the way from Vinaradi and all the way across Prague to Malastrana. And of course, there's a a distinct lack of tourists, which is having a catastrophic effect in one way, but a rather brilliant effect another way, uh, which is that now uh, me as a, dare I say, a local, I can kind of enjoy it, whereas before I would avoid places. Um, and so we're seeing a new a new view of Prague, and, and that's a kind of obvious thing. And I'm, I don't I don't mean to undermine the effect on the hospitality industry. I think there's 3,650 bars, uh, if I believe all the numbers, but that I've that all had or will have seen some in, or had some impact. Mm -hmm. um, and and things for me, I shop more uh, and have had things delivered. So I, my, my diet's probably improved. My consumption of tea is off the charts. My whiskey consumption probably eh, on par. I mean, if, as I would say to my mother, my whiskey bottles here at home are always almost full. <laughs> and that's not because I consume massive amounts. It's because they're mostly ornate. I keep them for show. Um, so for, for for me, I I'm kind of hoping we're coming out of this. I think I think we are, but we got to be careful not to undo the good work uh, that we have done as the Czech Republic. And I think most people have kind of adhered to the masks, whether or maybe maybe not. That's had an effect. I personally believe that has been um, a good thing to do. Um, I I couldn't. I don't know if this scientifically that's been a good thing to do, but I think so. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think everyone's mostly stuck to it. Some people are saying, no, nope, it's, it's not a worthwhile thing doing. But I think that has been a good thing. And, and I think I think things have changed forever. Uh, they're selling beers in Old Town Square. To, uh, uh, they're not at local prices, which mm -hmm. is something I've never heard of in all my time here. And, that, and that's because, of course, tourism now is dependent on those in the Czech Republic, not coming from, from other where. I, I suspect that will probably change back. But. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, Prague, Prague is more open, more spacious uh, in ways. I've, I'm, I'm now appreciating buildings. I'm not a big architecture uh, uh, guy, but uh, as somebody once told me in Prague, you should always look up. And of course, if you looked up before, you'd be, you'd be banging into people. Uh, you don't really have to do that, mm -hmm. do that you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so how many days you are actually locked down? I mean, really like not leaving your apartment. If, uh, so I stay, coincidentally, I stayed home um for about two or three days because i had things on before it all kind of grind uh, came to came to a stop so i've now been this has been my desk and this view of my monitor and what you guys can see behind me has been home for about i think tomorrow will be week seven so and and that's when i started to notice that i'm quite a social person I'm quite a social animal and i need that kind of interaction and you can't really get you know 15,000 steps you can't get 1500 or 15 steps sometimes in an apartment this small and it's not that small but you see the point so yeah entering week seven I think kind of losing track it's Wednesday right uh, Tuesday Do it, see there you go <laughs> I know all the days become one and um and I kind of buried myself in work both for customers and 
and and some other projects and i did about two weeks of solid work and kind of realized you need to start start taking breaks mm -hmm. so there's a bit of discipline in you know keeping you know having a five minute cup of tea whatever it might be breaking up the day and and kind of trying to develop a routine so it's seven weeks i think with the exception of three trips outside one was a walk and two bike rides mm -hmm. so you were only, only an hour so. you recommend other people to find the routine if they are working from home doing breaks and going out oh, to sure. clear their exactly. mind you, you you i i i did notice it a bit two weeks ago when i literally had worked two weeks straight mm -hmm. and um that it can be hard because i associate taking time out with going out and of course, there's only so much Netflix. I'm not the biggest TV watcher. And so there's only so much Netflix I could watch. And somebody got me into some dude with a, some tiger dude with some tigers that took it. That was a really weird story. You'll know the one I mean, I think. And I, I watched a little bit, a little bit of that. And I find myself kind of going, there's something really weird going on, going on here. And, uh, and so I, I, I kind of pulled away from Netflix, found some other stuff. And then I had a bunch of problem solving. So I remember that thing, have to fix that. And there were some people I hadn't spoken to in a while. My mother, <laughs> you know, I definitely speak to my mother more often. My eight year old niece now mm -hmm. FaceTimes me at really, really inconvenient moments, but you know, such is life. And it's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we developed a kind of Skype pub that mm -hmm. we do kind of every second night, which has grown in ways mm -hmm. that I never saw coming. People mm -hmm. on from, Dubai, Hong Kong, certainly Scotland, Prague, of course. Uh, and we had 40 people, I think, which of course gets a little bit loud and unorganized, as you'd imagine, but just hilarious. Uh, and, and we had a guy on from Nairobi. My friend Ian was on from Nairobi. And uh, just, just from th things that wouldn't have happened if this mm -hmm. hadn't happened. If mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It gives us opportunities now how to. Yeah. I mean, you, you, need, you need to kill some time, not, not so much kill some time, but some sort of human interaction is, is necessary. Um, and, and so we, we found ways that were, that were there before. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have any new tech. Um, I, might, I might have organized my office 23 times and tidied the flat 24 times, but, but we, I wasn't doing anything that I didn't do before. And I would just do it more regularly. Mm -hmm. And of course, there comes the question of, is this the way the world is going to be? And I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. I managed to get my mother on Skype, mm -hmm. which is hilarious. Well, no, mm -hmm. was it Skype? No, WhatsApp video. I forget. You get the point, though. You know, mm -hmm. and and that's just you know trying to direct your mother from two thousand miles away, fifteen hundred miles away, mm -hmm. is not the most good thing for your patients, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So can we say that maybe even we are social distancing? It is becoming that we are getting closer to some people. Yeah, I I think you could say you are. Social distancing, yes, but you're becoming, what would you say, technically, emotionally closer, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but there was something I read that said guys have never phoned each other so much in, in, all, the, in all, their, all their days. So normally we would say beer, 2 p.m., ciao, and that would be the limit of the conversation, and we'd have more of a conversation, of course, um, in person. Um, now we actually get on the phone, and I'm not saying it's, you know, olympically long conversations, but we, we certainly talk more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you mentioned that you go out, there are places with no tourists. So are there are any other people like you, you meet strolling the streets or is it really totally empty? It's totally, I mean, when I went out kind of two weeks ago, it was totally empty. I, I walked from here down through Zhuskov to Car near Carlin, all that sort of direction. Then I walked all the way along the, liver, the river, it's kind of 12 kilometers there was no one about it was wonderful i mean I, I mean that's absolutely not sustainable um and i don't know if i'd want prague to be that empty it loses a little bit of its buzz mm. although conversely if you go the other way and it's got six bazillion tourists it's not it, there are parts of prague i just wouldn't go to because they are you get a totally different different experience as, as, as you know trying to live here as you do as a tourist and i'm not always convinced the tourists get the right impression in some parts but you know that's again another conversation but yeah, it, it was entirely empty there, there was a kind of near zero noise and uh it, it was great and and i probably would have been out and about longer had i not nearly given myself a heart attack walking 12 miles 12 kilometers uh-huh uh-huh so how were your how was your feeling maybe when you experienced this for the first time because for example i was in the states when this happened and yeah. i back to Brno and when I first time saw empty streets 
and people with the masks. It was a completely different reality than when I was leaving, and I was like, "Oh my God, what happened? Some attack? Something is completely..." Well, yeah, you, you you think all the wrong things. Now people are going to think I'm weird, but I'm going to explain anyway because nothing to hide. But I, I for for many years I had this kind of reoccurring dream when I had a flat in Glasgow and a flat in Prague, and I would I would wake up. I'll, I'll spare you the details, but basically, in summary, the world has ended. And the way the world is going to be rebuilt would be I have to get to Prague, but I'm in Glasgow. And, and <laughs> silly things like you got to dig a hole in the floor to get to your car to drive it. Up. I'll leave that right there, but you get the point. So it was a little bit apocalyptic. I mean, I, I, I it kind of happened gradually. You know, I was Ill, already indoors, and you had to improvise with what I'm going to wear as a as a mask. And then I kind of went outside, and it's a little bit like somebody's taking the bag off your head. You're where, where, where is everyone? So it, it is, and I hope this is the case, as close as we get to some, anything apoc apoc apocalyptic, can't even mm. say the word. Um, and, and it does kind of make you think that you've, that, I mean, there's other places in the world where this is, did I say, not normal, but uh, closer to hell. Um, and so I, uh, it's a bit of an eye opener and I hope it's short lived. There are some things I'll still continue, but wearing a mask all day is, and by the way, that's a ski mask. So wearing it out, outside when it's warm is not the best experience. I don't, actually, I don't think any mask is. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think of all these care workers doing it all day, it must be, it must be horrible. Mm -hmm. um, but as I always say, our, our grandparents, whatever you came from, were asked to go to war. We are being asked to sit on the couch. That's probably doable. You know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so are Prague people obedient? Do they wear masks? Um, I think the only people I've seen, I mean, I've seen a couple of policemen being, you know, getting on people's cases saying, you know, you got to wear a mask. Um, yeah, I don't think I've seen, a, a, you know, a couple of bunch of, well, actually a couple of photographs have popped up here and there with, you know, maybe people in parks when they shouldn't have been and, and you know, bending of the rules, that's to be expected. That's just human nature. Um, but anyway, if I, I went out earlier just to, to grab uh, five minutes away from my desk, and um masks everywhere so and you know and people are fairly are fairly obedient and and, and sticking to it um so i think yes i would say mm -hmm. actually I, I, I listened to some online radio today from home in scotland where they've just suggested people wear masks and i thought let me go and check social media <laughs> and and you'd have thought people had said, please walk on your hands forevermore or never go out again. Just the response is probably, well, I'll, I'll spare you the details. You can imagine. You can imagine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you just men mentioned your homeland. You mentioned Scotland or the Great Britain. Uh, and also we talked the, the other day that now Great Britain is looking at the Czech Republic, how we did. Yep how we were fighting, how we have been fighting this. So we yeah. are giving them as an example, right? There was one article uh, one of our writers uh, sent on, and I think we published something uh, where, you know, The Guardian had been looking at the Czech Republic as somewhere that's beginning to, I think they call it flatten the curve. And so if you look at the statistics, and there's no end of these, but the, the general consensus is when you look at the, the path that all of, our, all of the countries with COVID-19 go through, you know, we're barely off, the, we, the Czech Republic, are barely off the bottom. And so we haven't had the horrific uh, uh, impact that other countries have seen. Um, now, whether you believe in masks or you believe what the, the Czech state did is right or wrong, the numbers don't lie. And, and they're, they're always subject to spin and manipulation. But I think, generally speaking, what's happened has been the right way. It's had the response. And other countries, yes, should uh, look at the way we've we've done it. Mm -hmm. And what about Scotland then? How is the situation going Well, on? Scotland, um, uh, it, it was actually the first minister of Scotland that I was listening to uh, earlier. She was on radio and she was saying that, yeah, you should start to wear masks. And I I mean, I, I, I'm laughing now. I, c I can just imagine most people in the west of Scotland saying absolutely no chance. Uh, now, let's be honest, I actually think I look better with a mask on, but I can imagine most vanity will kick in and nobody's going to wear a mask. I mean, even in Prague, I, I look at people when they say hello. When I do see them, I don't recognize them because, of course, the mask is off. I, I, I don't see that going down very well socially. Um, and, 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 and Scots people are, are, how would you describe, are, are very, I'll do it if I want and not if I don't, which means even if they make it law, 
there'd be a lot of people saying, I don't care, I'll give me the fine. And what I think should generally happen is a big list of people who don't wear masks is prepared. And when you do get COVID-19, we'll let you suffer a little bit. Now, I'm joking, of course, for anyone that might be getting upset with me, but uh, you can see where I'm going there. It's, it's preventative measures and there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with, with it for, like I say, a month. That sort of stuff. No, 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 nobody. It's not going to affect your life negatively. In fact, it might even make make it better and reduce your risk. So, mm -hmm. so you see the difference between these two nationalities, like Czech people, oh, yeah. who are like very like they they are recommended to wear the masks, and the sure. second day everyone is doing the masks and we wear the masks. And on the contrary, Great Britain or also America. I read an article that these people they need to be really like told specifically yeah i, I mean then that, 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 that's that's maybe the point where they need a little bit of their own medicine before they actually think it's a good mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. and now of course the us has got its own media spin engine at any given day i mean i i'm, I'm relatively new to the kind of media side of things you know we we spun up city spy as a as a as a business venture and I'm, i've been learning how to do this as as, as we've gone um, and, and I've always said, if there's a slight, you know, don't don't write something if 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 it can't factually be backed up. Um, and I think I'd like to think mostly we've stuck to that. Um, and I think in the US that they are they are so I'm going to say so used they won't know they're being sold to or misinformed. But the response a lot of people are outside going, you know, this this is just the flu that old argument. And <laughs> and I, I genuinely don't know what the fix is. I don't know how you convince people on mass that that this is a good idea. Now, why why the the, the Czech Republic responded the way it did? Uh, I could probably guess, guess at a few reasons, but I, I genuinely just think they went, yeah, that's pretty much something that's good to do. Uh, makes sense. There's been a couple of you know, scientific uh, articles posted. You protect me, I protect you. There was a good campaign done with the whole mask thing. I forget who uh, Peter or somebody. I think did the, yeah, yeah. yeah did, did the video and and it went all the way it should have done, mm -hmm. and and created the right response. And so we ended up where we are, and and we're getting out of this. You know, we're not necessarily going to stay home any longer than than I think we have to. And mm -hmm. so as we roll into summer, uh, I'm hoping I can get down to Naplavka and have my beer a little bit sooner. <laughs> and if yeah. that means wearing a stupid mask for of course. Then you are ten. No, no brainer, no brainer. You know, and you have the white masks here. From exactly, and I even saw somebody put a they put a kind of straw through it for drinking your beer, or was it a yeah, kind of bottle yeah, top? Yeah. You know, people get quite ingen quite inventive mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to these things. You know. Yeah, yeah. It may be uh, here in the Czech Republic that we responded this way that we are used to from the communist era. era you know, you know, let's see, I was going I was gonna suggest that that's not my position to suggest, but, yeah, but so maybe I think loudly that we yeah. may be used to this. So we yeah. we do maybe, maybe just maybe that played, you know, I, I I I that's one of these kind of controversial subjects that I don't really believe yeah. my position to comment on because I, I, I that that was all done by the time I yeah, settled in. It may be related somehow. Possibly. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you were surprised by Czech people, how they react with suing the masks and everything, or not really? Yeah, there, was, there was a couple of rebels, I mean, you know, around the street saying, no chance, I'm not having that. But I, I, I think this is one of these situations where the end proves the means. So you, I can't remember who said it, and I'm going to get slightly philosophical or philosophical. Was it Steve Jobs that said it? You can't work it out looking forward, but when you look back the way, that all makes sense, right? So if we look back at this eight weeks, seven, eight weeks of hell for a lot of people, it, when, it, when it could have been 16 weeks or longer, and, and and we are now getting to the point where next week or next week we can all get, actually even yesterday, I think some bars and et cetera started to open. I've, I've lost a little bit of track of you know what opens when. Um, then I think it was a short-term gain for, for a longer-term goal. Again, mm -hmm. no and, and I think if you look at the Czech Republic's desire for a beer, I'm pretty sure that's you know good motivation. I mean, I love a, mm -hmm. most of us love a beer, and then you look at the weather. They do. Yeah, it just makes a bunch of sense, right? <laughs> yeah, but you can still buy the beer at least, or you can come with the mug somewhere and like. Oh, they are. I mean, I where I am down the street, there's a, there's a people bar, and and it's queued out most days because they've got. I, as I was again learning, they've got a lot of beer. They can't move because the mm -hmm. supply. Is broken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, there's a lot of beer on offer, people. Uh, from places. 
Mm -hmm. You mentioned Náplavka is your favorite city uh, more than once. Uh, so you don't go actually to these like parks and other places where people oh. hang out or do you? How it is there? Is there a lot of people? Do they keep the social distancing or not? Really? Um, I, I I definitely do go around. You know, there's there's any number of parks uh, close to where I am. Uh, Grabovka, uh, I was going to hit Naplavka, but that's on the, the river. But uh, Rigiri Sadi, uh, I got quite excited uh, last weekend when I was out for a walk. There was a small truck uh, parked in the middle of where the Rigiri Sadi beer garden used to be. And there was no benches, and there was a queue you know, down the side. And that, he was doing a great trade in beer. And I, and, I, and I think, I don't know if the story's changed, but the lease, of course, came up for renewal. And then when we give you Sadi, which is quite popular for both beer and sport, and just kind of hanging out. And nobody took, nobody, the, the, the current people with the lease decided not to do anything with it. There was some argument with the state, I understand. And so it's just kind of sat, become overgrown, but it was such a wonderful space right in the top of the hill. You could sit there all day, you know, and, and you know, everything's accessible. So if you want to go for a burger, taverns over there, if you want to go and sit, you know, and, and have a, uh, a, a beer you know when the sun goes down there's a little place just halfway down the hill and and again really the only place that i think is featured quite heavily in, in photographs for criticism has been when people sit on the hill overlooking prague and they've done them more than two and everyone's not got masks on and 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 i'm not particularly outspoken i think i believe in karma karma will fix them <laughs> hopefully not in a horribly terminal way although that would be a good thing for some people i'm they shall not they shall remain nameless uh, so the mild, again, a mild bending of the rules of people in in, uh, in Rigavi Sadi when I saw it. And I was only on the Plavka briefly when I was on that 12K walk. And mm -hmm. there was no one there. And what people, what people were there, they were, they were wearing masks. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. And how about the public transport? I don't know if you use it nowadays. Uh, I have, actually, just this past weekend when I go on errand, uh, we... I did use it and it was empty, mm. you know, the, and, and they've got, you know, signs on the door. Uh, I don't really know if they police it, but you, you're supposed to wear a mask covering your nose and mouth when you're on. The doors open automatically, so you don't really need to touch anything, which is kind of a good thing. But uh, I think they've ran or run mostly empty for the last month. Mm. Mm -hmm. um i haven't been that was a tram i haven't been on the metro um and I, I guess my head it's very it's very easy to become a bit of a germaphobe you know where you where you think you've got no air movement and germs will mingle you know that's going to put me in motel or whatever it might be uh hospital i i, I i've kind of had to caution myself say no wash your hands do all the things that mm -hmm. people say you're going to be all right so i i, 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 I haven't avoided uh, trams or, or metro or the metro but i haven't had reason to use them because my world is here. Yeah. <laughs> you and are every, everyone I need to talk to is basically where you're sitting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. And how about uh, the city of Prague? Do you mm -hmm. get some messages, some news? Do you follow some special channel? Yeah. How does the city inform the people living in Prague about the current situation? I mean, I. I I'd like to think most people follow, you know, City Spy or Prague TV one way or another. You know, mo most of the, certainly for those that are English speaking, we, we don't focus on expats typically. We're English speaking, so I don't care if you come from the moon. You know, we, we focus on on, on English speaking and, and we get a, a feed from some credible sources. And um, we also have the Prague Monitor uh, newsletter, which goes out daily and we kind of get, or indeed uh, our editor gathers news from various sources. So. For us to populate that, we get the emails and the alerts from various sources. You know, the Czech news agency, Radio CZ, uh, expats who appear in our mar in the market. You know, and and as long as it's, I did have an exchange kind of back in the start when I I don't believe that reporting the numbers did Prague the best. I think I think to constantly bang on about deaths and all, and that that's the it could be factually correct, but it's the wrong message. You know, we should be giving out coping techniques and helping people get through this and not scaring them so that they can function uh, as best they can. Um, and there was a couple of actions taken by, uh, or a couple of things done by those that have an audience that I didn't agree with. Um, and we've been quite light touch in, in reporting in anything relating to, to COVID-19 or coronavirus. Um, but generally, I think most people are well informed. I mean, when, when you come here, 
as as an English speaker, if you, as a non-native. I mean, granted, when I did it long long ago, or anyone coming here now, it's written news in English is quite easy to find. Um, I I don't know what you would be doing wrong if you didn't find it. You know, even if you did some googling, and with Facebook promotion that we do now and again, you know, we 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 can invariably find you um, if if you're English speaking. So the news, that's what they say. You you don't find the news, the news finds you. Um, type stuff, type <laughs> stuff. So I think most people have been well informed. You know, wh whether it whether they agree with it, it's an entirely different subject. Um, and so I think it's mostly, uh, yeah, I think most people have been well in well informed. Mm -hmm. That's good. So guys, if you don't feel informed, you can follow City Spy Prague. City Spy Prague. I mean, or or anyone in the in the market. The, the the challenge we've got as a business right now is there's a bit of an yeah. overlap in in what we all do. Yeah, uh, yeah, City yeah. Spy is, is is attempting to do the best of Prague, um, and the best of Prague is kind of hard to do when everything's shut. Um, and we <laughs> we decided we didn't really want to share the same news that our that our our peers in the market were doing. They did a great job, and they had their way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but our, the, of course, we are famous for our video. Famous for our videos. We, most of what we do is video based. So Anna and I have been shooting some videos using Skype and Zoom. I met Zach from the Prague Lines. We had a conversation. Let's see, we're meeting you today. Um, but when you're trying to show the best of Prague, it's kind of hard to do it from your lounge. So yeah. we'll, we'll get back to that. We'll get back yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah. And you can also follow us, guys, foreigners.cz uh, slash newsletter. You can sign up for our newsletter as we send. You guys are doing a, a daily. Yeah, right thank you as well. Uh, also sharing the articles that Kenny uh, mentioned and writing entries on our blog. So hopefully you are well informed, or you can be in the future. Exactly. I, mean, I, I genuinely think that, that you're know, as well informed as, as, as you can be. You know. <laughs> Great. Uh, so Kenny, what about some tips now, uh, where people can still get their favorite things like? coffee, tea, whiskey, or whatever, because for example, here in Brno, some cafes, they, they are open, they have this little window yeah. or the restaurants and they do delivery or you can really come and take it away. So sure. what are your tips on the places in Brno? So, whiskey was never really in short supply. Um, and, and, and I haven't, <laughs> some people might have wanted you know to drink whiskey, dare we say a little bit more often. I, that's still a, a mild luxury for me. And, and for those who know me, they'll know that an absolute lie. Uh, <laughs> and that, I, uh, I want to recommend like that you should be alcoholics or anything. That's well, <laughs> yeah, and if my, if my mother's watching, don't worry, the, the, the bottles have not been touched. Well, hi. Um, because like I say, there's only so much Netflix, et cetera, you, you can do. Um, of course, we know that a lot of the delivery services, I, th I think if there's one business that's booming, it'll be the Rolex and the Tesco's of this world, you know, and, and even the bars and restaurants of, I mean, um, two couple of examples, uh, two or three examples. Uh, one, there was a bar I know had such a surplus of beer, they decided to deliver it for free. And it doesn't really matter if you're ordering one bottle or 10, they will bring it to your door. If you look at Rolik, um, they, they, you couldn't get a, a slot on their delivery schedule for about three weeks in the start. And they've, they've done a great job of, of, of stepping that up. Tesco, I, I, I was more a Rolik fan, but Tesco did the same. All the bars and restaurants went straight to Volt and Dami Yidlo and got themselves on. And, and even Manifesto, when you, which you look at as, a, as a pretty much a venue you go to, they're all open but they're delivering. So if you're missing anything, I'm going to ask how hard you're looking. Uh, don't get me wrong, things go out of stock, of course, but they're not out of stock for forever. Uh, and I do believe Party 24CZ will deliver you whiskey if you're so inclined. Although I wouldn't know that because I've never used them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's not that difficult to now st still get your favorite. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I probably never had so much food in my, I, I, never, I never panicked by, I never did the toilet roll thing. And I never went down to Bila downstairs and bought them out of bread or milk. And I never did that. I was I was genuinely always convinced this was going to be short lived, at least in the Czech Republic. Um, there are some other things you I, 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 I don't think there's anything I've not been able to get. Mm -hmm. That's you know? good news. <laughs> so there we go. Okay. okay, good. Uh, what about expats or maybe Scottish people, the communities in Prague, uh, of the communities of um, foreigners, see that they are somehow gathering more online, sharing information. Do you see anything like that? Um, 
It's quite, I mean, I, there's not millions of us here, but it, it's quite a common mix, you know, Czech guys and 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 and, and Scottish ladies. Um, and there's a few friends that I've had the odd exchange with um, online, possibly no more than maybe I would. Um, I mean, they're here with families and that sort of stuff. And, and I don't have any kids. Uh, the closest I've got to a kid so far is, uh, is my niece, who's uh, with my sister, and they're probably murdering each other, um, <laughs> you know, for some, or have been for some weeks. Um, and so that you know that kind of Scottish Czech mix hasn't really featured too too heavily, uh, but like we were saying with um, uh, checking in on friends that sort of stuff, we we've spent more time being in touch than perhaps uh, we would have done. Uh, and I suspect I I have this fear. Uh, my friend uh, Danny and I, or actually he he shared he shared with me he called it Wave Two, which is when the when all of the restrictions are removed and we all just go. And we all run towards the little parts of the virus will will blow up again, <laughs> and then we'll all be home for six months. Mm. So I'm kind of hoping we we take it easy <laughs> when, yeah. when all the restrictions yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Start, uh, start coming on. I know I know they've started uh, being re reduced now, um, and and a few people that I have spoken to have said I'm not going back to the office immediately. There'll be a little bit of a kind of watch and see just to make sure there's nothing going to undo all the good work uh, that's gone on. You know? Yeah, maybe it could be in waves, like step by step. Yeah, I know, but when it comes to that, you, 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 would, you would literally need the, the army in the street to say, hang on, it's not your day, get back inside. <laughs> you know, you, They will do it some way. And don't get me wrong, when I want a beer, I'd kill for it. You know, when I really, when, when you've had such a hard week, yeah. you, you, there's not a lot going to keep me at home. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's not quite true. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would do the... Okay, I'll have it next week when it's my turn. Yeah. Um, but you know that the general public's not really good at that sort of thing, you know, when, mm. it, when it affects what they want to do. Mm. That's true. And uh, do you feel it was somehow more difficult for you as a foreigner, as an expat in a different country? Do you think that you would feel safer back in your homeland? Or what's in general, what do you think is the most difficult thing for an expat in this situation? Um, I guess there's the kind of fear the borders remain closed for longer than than, than, than I would like. Now, um first things first I, I i feel a bit as safe as i actually i feel i can't imagine anywhere safer than uh, dare i say the czech republic I, I i i genuinely mean that i mean my hat off to the way that things have gone have gone on I, we, but we don't this isn't the end of course um and so for now I, I i still feel safe i am craving some outside time that that can be done in in the in the ways we know um I was home, met my family uh, just before all this at Easter time, so I'm not due another visit for seven years. No, I'm joking, seven months. Um, and 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 so there's nothing I can't do right now that is affecting my life. I'm, I'm you know, still working. Please let that continue. You know, we know there's a lot of people not. Mm -hmm. uh, my team are still working and they're doing a great job. Um, one was uh, had to quarantine. I think twice, and then ended up getting a bus from France to the Czech Republic. She was part of the one of the uh, the groups of people that had to repatriate uh, uh, on some of these flight arrangements, which are not regular, super expensive, and then of course crammed. So for me, I think everything's in hand. Um, if I have an internet connection and a cup of tea, I can I can take the world on. I'm mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay. I haven't seen my other half in seven weeks, and she's across town. We, you know, we talk and all that sort of stuff. I, although I don't think she's talking to me today. <laughs> um, uh, and and so when I can go out, which I think is now the 11th of May or the 20th, I can't remember. I'm going straight to the barber shop. Look at the state of that. Yeah, 11th um, the May. Yeah, and, and, and by the way, that's a, that is a lot of hair product to <laughs> keep that. Yeah, you get the point. Uh, and then I'm going for a beer, a socially mm. distanced beer, because I do believe we need to do that a little bit longer, or maybe we'll find a small space in a park somewhere and, and sit there and then for an hour or so hour or two and then come away and let someone else enjoy it you know mm -hmm. um, okay. just remember I don't, I don't think it's done yet i think there's a little bit to go so. yeah of course we all if you ask me that question again possibly in about a month lucy I'll, i might give you a different answer okay i will put a reminder because i'll be running towards that window at a rate of not so you know we won't go there, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. It's getting more difficult to stay at home when the summer is approaching, you know. We all know that it's, it's true. such a tease. The weather, I mean, I've loved 
the weather, the, the winters in Prague and the Czech Republic, Republic can be brutal, but the summers are fab, you know, and, and I've always loved uh, uh, the weather in the summer. And I, I always say that, that, that in Scotland, we have two seasons. We have winter and July. Mm. Uh, and, and, and every July, summer's a Wednesday, and, and people get a laugh. But it, it, they, 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 they can, especially when you have kids. My sister's a kid, and the kids can't go out. It's killer. Um, and, and my mother usually comes over once a year, maybe once every second year, and, and it's principally, I'd like to think to see me, but no, she's here for the weather. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, thank you. Uh, so, what are your like basic tips, I would say, how to manage this? Uh, maybe if you can give an example also from your company, your business, because you are working sure. in a team, you have some other people working. So what did you change? and maybe something that you will still use in the future that you found useful during this period? Of course. Uh, I, I think I said a few things have changed forever. Um, I reacquainted myself with Skype, and, and, it, and it's wonderfully convenient not to have to dive on the metro and run across town for a meeting that you could probably do um, virtually. So I think a, a percentage of a, a high percentage of the meetings that we do um, will be virtual. Um, and you know, I'm I've, I'm looking at two phones and an iPad in front of me, so I'm fortunate in 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 that I've got the tech to do it. Sometimes that's not always possible, uh, but certainly with the, the 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 teams that I have, we'll probably have more meetings uh, virtually in the interest of productivity and time. But I'm the I'm the kind of guy in the morning that needs a degree of, or even the day, and it needs a degree of of regularity. So I'll still get up, make the bed, and you know, cup of tea, start the day. Uh, I have noticed with. Uh, I have a big tech customer, a big uh, project management customer here in Prague. The number of calls, so the calls have got shorter, but the number have got more often. Um, and, and that means that you can run the whole day with, when you can't go for a pee. Um, and, and so you, you need to break that up. It, and, I, and you're talking to a guy who thought right at the start, I'm going to be okay with this. And then about five or six weeks in, I'd kind of work myself into a, you know, not quite brain dead, but you get the point. And I needed basically a whole weekend dribbling in front of the TV to kind of get myself back uh, back on track. So you, you can't, I mean, I, I, I always thought I was bulletproof. And a couple of years ago, I, I kind of burnt out a little bit and I saw the signs coming and I kind of pulled back. And you, so you basically need a couple of hours work in the morning, then you need a break and then some outside time. Um, and and I, again, I thought I could get out, get away without, without the outside time. And that just was not the case. Mm -hmm. So you need to, you know, cut, even even if you go and sit in the couch for ten minutes and watch some, some I nearly said shit TV, but you get the point, and watch some rubbish TV, <laughs> and have a cup of tea and just take your mind off stuff. Um, that I forget who did the analysis, but if you can imagine a graph of your concentration over time, so if over the cross of course of the day it goes down. If you take a break, you end up going back up again, then you do some work, and then you, you go back up again, and that means you get a you get more time in the day. At your peak in performance, it it does degrade, of course, of course, across the day with tiredness, but that's just a fact. And then, of course, and I am going to say, shoot the shit, get on, just break up, break up someone else's day. Novartis, my biggest tech customer here, are wonderful. They set up coffee mornings, sorry, not coffee mornings, coffee breaks, where you've got forty-five minutes, and it might sound pointless, but you just get on and you don't have to talk about work, and you get your your, your own cup of tea. I'm totally convinced some of them don't have tea or coffee in their cups, but I'm going to go with the fact that, yes, they've got tea and coffee, if you get what I'm saying, and mm -hmm. they've got some social time. And it does it, it does wonderful uh, things from for mental health. Um, and there's a few friends that I've had that were very engaged with us at the start, Skype, pub, online, and then they vanished. And we had to go and find out, make sure they were okay. And one particular uh, person um, wasn't doing so well, and so we only just last week had a, had a bit of a chat and, and she admitted, she says, I, I hate this isolation. It is just not good for me. And, and I, I think we all kind of reach that point where it's going to take a bigger or have a bigger impact than we think. You know? mm -hmm. So break it up, cups of tea, as much social time as you can get. I know it's hard. Um, and, and I don't I can't imagine what it's like with people with kids. If the kids are not strangling them, they're strangling the kids. I, I, I laugh about it, but... I, I've only got myself to manage and I, I my head off to them, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I as well admire all these moms who are now working on home offices with both the kids or I don't know how many and kids. I, I, and, and I've told the told this story a few times. We, we you've got we, we we there's always one guy joins our Skype pub and you you'd think Prague Zoo had joined the call 
and and the kid, the guy still got a Christmas tree up. It's April, and David, that's you, by the way. You know, so so we're, Danny and I are looking in the call. Is that a Christmas tree? He went, yeah, it saves us, but you know, taking it out for next year. Long Christmas. Yeah, and then there's this kid, kid swinging behind him, and he sits very calmly at at his desk and goes. Mm -hmm. If they entertain themselves, and I, I heard one thing saying, if the scientists don't find a cure for COVID nineteen, the parents will, ah, um, which I think is very true. <laughs> cool. So, can you sum up what you have learned from this situation? Yes, um, and the lessons continue. So I can see somebody saying it's it's not finished yet. Sure, and, and I, a Czech lesson in a bit. Don't worry. Well, I'm, I'm being told I should speak. Of course, I should speak Czech, but you know, I'm. <laughs> And, and you, you, everyone, feel free to tell me I'm rubbish. <laughs> I'm in a wonderful, wonderful position where, over the years, my time here, I I've been allowed to be able, or allowed to not make speaking Czech a priority. I'm not going to embarrass myself. I, I understand a lot of it, not not most of it. I, I've I've busted people, you know, speaking Czech behind my back, thinking I don't understand, and I do, not to everything. But I am, and my wonderful Czech friends make fun of me most days. The very funny story: it took me two years to know the, the difference between Nazdravi cheers and Nadraji train station. So when yeah. I first came to Prague, I said Nadraji, mm -hmm. and, and one person eventually said train station. No, no cheers. No train station. And of course, there's a standing joke now where Nadr mm -hmm. Nadraji. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, and I know, and I and I I genuinely wish I had spent more time learning I, i wish i spent more time in high school learning i just i just had a riot i was just, i was a stupid kid in that mm -hmm. regard and then lo and behold here i am in central europe and so i i thank everyone for not making it as big a deal as i think they, they should have done sorry um uh, so, so yeah, I'll, unless i can use the time to learn check thank you yeah. uh things that have changed um yeah you know, more time spending quality time with the with people that you you and not over a beer even if you go for a walk or that all that sort of stuff um and and um i think i will be more aware of when i do spend time with people that it's not all about getting pissed and and and, and drunk and i mean we don't do that all the time but you you if you sit in the plavka all day it invariably happens but you're actually appreciating time and there may be people in that are not in prague that i'll make um efforts to go and see um And last year, we friends and I decided. Uh, we, yes, we did some travels abroad, but we also spent a lot more time in the Czech Republic. So we would get the train uh, from from Prague to Brno or Berlin or Dresden or um, Ostrava. And uh, for for me, as a startup guy, and, and we and we have a lot more. Actually, we have a bigger project that's bigger than the media portals. They they are they're only a component part. We've been developing this for six years. Again, conversation for another call to jump on a train and get some quality time. Looking at the beautiful countryside uh, is is wonderful, uh, and that, and that's time away, and that's something that's not new to me. Uh, I will have a new affiliation with not being in my apartment. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to spend a lot of time outside. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, hopefully not for those that have joined in, in a in a ski mask. But uh, yeah, get I, some I, <laughs> again. Sorry, get some lighter one. The yeah, man. probably. Um, I, and I, and I love the fact that there's some websites I've seen have made have made kind of fashion and fashionable and trendy ones. Uh, mm. And there are some people who should wear a mask all the time, probably me included. They look better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure that you are fine like you are right now. All right. Yeah, well, so as we mentioned, this is the time when some people have, or all of us have more time, uh, and maybe some of us starts start new projects, like you had an idea for a long time that you want to do something, like, for example, learning Czech or any other different language. So is there anything that you have started doing finally in this period? Um, I mean, my, my, I, I've had a few challenges in business in the Czech Republic, and there's a couple of problems that I've, I've been meaning to deal with. So one or two of those has now, has now been addressed. Another one we decided to fix. And it wasn't because I didn't have it in my mind. It, I just couldn't make it a priority. So now that we have a bit of time um, and 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 a few more resources, you know, in some cases cash too, we decided to fix those things. Um, we had a, we bought or we acquired the Prague Morning, uh, Prague Morning, wrong twice of words, Kenny, Prague Monitor uh, website and Prague TV. So they're getting an upgrade. 
um, and we're kind of pushing ahead with with those. Do we see in the in the quiet times? And 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 City Spy is a relatively new portal, you know, two and a bit years. So there's there's ongoing project work there that we uh, we want to we want to push and finish. Um, and there's a little bit of some of the smaller projects we've had on the cards, trying to get those closed. Um, I've got a kind of rule where we're not taking on any new projects this year. Actually, I had that rule before uh, Prague TV and, and, and the Prague Monitor joined the portfolio, so we kind of bend that rule a little bit, but in the interest of the greater good. So, um, and then I, I started reading. Oh. I mean, I, I can read just for the avoidance of doubt, uh, <laughs> but started started doing some reading. And as I mentioned earlier, some of these dreams I, I've had in the past, which are a little bit weird and wacky, we used to, we started a book with a friend and I, and I got that out the other day and I'm kind of looking, going through it from two years ago mm -hmm. and I'm reading it going, yeah, you really are crazy, Kenny. But then I, I decided to write the next chapter. So. Wow. Good job. <laughs> I know. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to publish it. I, I would be, I'd end up in Bohani. So yeah. you're going to be a writer. Um, I've always done writing. Always yeah. done writing. It's, that's. To me, that's you know, get it out your head type stuff. Create a bit of brain space. Mm. Very, very therapeutic on occasion. I've written three books in various degrees of complete. Uh, one book called uh, All in a Year. One book called Teaching Giraffe, uh, Teaching Giraffes to DJ. That does require an explanation for an all time. Really and another book called Tough. Who can read it? Um, if you let me know who you are, I might let you read it. Read them. Maybe you will get, you know, questions like I'm, that. Oh, hey. I'll definitely get questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll definitely get questions. The, the, the middle one, teaching giraffes to DJs, is, is all about those things in life that should be easy that are that people make a, make hard. And uh, it's, I, I mean, I, I I make myself laugh when I write. It's only, I mean, it's got about twenty chapters, short stories. It just makes me laugh. Okay. Like I say, therapy. So if everyone is interested in Kenny's books. <laughs> You can you can let you can let me know and uh, I'll give you them free by the way but I need to know who you are just in case they get published okay. somewhere. Okay, okay. Well, that's a nice activity. Something new in the book. Definitely recommend it as well. More time for yeah. reading. Perfect. All right. I will have a look just briefly now in the questions section if you have. I, I can any. yeah, I can see the points. I know what's coming. Go on. So a few popping up. It was mostly like uh, saying hi. And Yiri Felix is asking if uh, Kenny, do you have a permanent residence in the Czech Republic? I have temporary residency because, and I'll tell you exactly why. Seventeen years here, but because I was on and off, it took me a few years to decide to move all my tax affairs, salary, payroll, and all that sort of stuff to Prague, and our Czech Republic. And when I did, I hadn't, I didn't have the required. Um, I didn't meet all the criteria, so I thought best go with temporary. By the way, because Brexit was happening, so there was a couple of motivating points. And then once I've got the everything paid in the right way and set up, I will move to permanent. Mm -hmm. And foreigners did that, by the way. You should definitely use these guys. Yeah, thank you. So you are now the lucky one with the permanent residency who can leave the Czech Republic. You can come. Yeah, I, I could always leave, and and uh, and if I came back, I mean, I, and that, there was loads of people doing that. I I didn't need to leave. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So we are safe. And. Thanks. Then we have a question from Chris Pinock. Uh, I believe that it's about the books. Where can we get them? So can we? Mr. Pinock, I, I will I will consider sending you some links. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a good example. Actually, there is a good example of 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 my writing, which if you go, to, which is uh, on project management, and I did it with Jack Bauer in mind. It was, it was the character in an American TV series called Twenty Four, and I, and I called it uh, Project Management Jack Bauer style. Uh, and so we can share a link in the chat. Uh, I, I think I've got it off in my head, but I won't say it in case I get it wrong. Uh, I'll give you that book as a taster. And then <laughs> I think the t Teaching a Giraffe DJ uh, might need to follow because I'll have to dig it out and make sure it's, you know, legible. Uh -huh. I'm genuinely worried I've started something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm uh, now curious as well. I the, wonder... I, you, you can, you, I'll, I'll share a... I might share some examples. Let's put it like that, right? Let's okay. say, let's say that. So you, we will comment in the under this. Uh, yeah, when we're finished, I'll put I'll put a chat and uh I'll put a chat in perfect, the. Perfect. Perfect. Got, sorry, a link in the chat. <laughs> Great. I am checking now the other pages. Uh, if we have any comments or questions there from people. 
I have no idea what the charge is. No. <laughs> so just give me a second. No worries. I don't see any other questions for now. So I have uh, a few more just uh, mm -hmm. at the end, I would say. Uh, so what are you looking forward the most when this is over? Um, yeah, I, I think it would be nice if the weather was nice to to go and sit on the Plavka and look at the river. And, and that might sound like a simple thing, but I find that very therapeutic. Um, and there's always a kind of quiet buzz. And, and I, I was saying earlier, they've I think they've they've renovated all the arches, so they're kind of nice glass, nice. So uh, I, I think I saw. So that'd be kind of cool. Um, and just getting back to the, whether we do the travel or not, having the choice to travel would be kind of cool. Uh, I, I'm aware of a couple of weddings that have been postponed. Um, one's been moved to next year, and the other one's cancelled for now. And then, um, yeah, and 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 the kind of free being able to go outside without worrying um, that either you're affecting someone else or, or or indeed putting yourself at risk mm, understood yeah okay and uh we covered this a little bit as well uh you how do you see the prague will be will it be the same city how it was i bet probably not um uh, i suspect the tourism will return i think airbnb might be a little screwed for the good you know, rightly or wrongly, um, and Prague needs that. I mean, we 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 give the tourists a hard time, but that is a lot of inward inward investment. Um, and I was always very surprised at the speed at which things went really wrong. You know, so if you look from when all the restaurants and bars, etc., were closed to things starting to, you know, people losing their jobs, companies going bang. It was three weeks, four weeks. Mm -hmm. So. There's a few things that I, I can see the government deciding to do that you, you need to be able to make sure your business is, I don't know how they do it, just some thinking, you know, how, you know, make sure your business can last longer. I don't really know how we do that. Um, I think the tourists will return. They have to return. We need, we, we need that. Um, whether they return in the same, vo in the same volume, don't know. Um, and I think, yeah, life, life, life will go back to normal. I think people who have, um, so big businesses who have big concentration of offices, I think there's going to be a really volume change there. So where a, building, a company might have 1,500 people gathering, I think a lot of people will have got use by force of working from home. And therefore, there'll be a realization they don't need to, to, to um, home 1,500 people a day. Um, so I think there, there might be a reduction in, 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 in public transport use. So there's kind of knock on effects. And this is all thinking. I, I genuinely don't know um, mm. uh, what I'd like. I'd like to think we're a little bit easier on the world, uh, you know, from a climate perspective. I'm I'm not a fanatic in that regard, but that you know, it's there's a couple of cool things about that. Um, and I'd like to think that um, we're a bit more selective about who, how we travel because, as a guy who flew for years, that was just you know, going to the airport was a hellish, ex it was a horrible experience. And maybe maybe that could be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Genuinely, don't know. Yeah, I I'll, heard... I'll, I'll, I'll settle for a beer and a haircut right now. <laughs> yeah, I agree. No, with the beer, I don't drink the beer, but the the, the hairdresser is a like, yeah. <laughs> person in that way. I would say, uh, yeah, I heard some discussions that maybe people will change their uh, flying um, like habits that they won't go like one week here, one week there, another week to another destination, but maybe they will take a longer flight somewhere and then they sure. can travel locally. Um, I think the come. Czech tourist board is, or the Czech state is hoping that we all, I say we as Czechs or the Czech Republic, regardless of where you are, where you're from, holiday in the Czech Republic. Uh, and I think that's quite inevitable. I, I'm certainly more aware of getting into a confined space with other fleshy humans, right? So the tram, metro, airplane, you know, I, I'm acutely aware that if I come out, come out the other end, I might be different or or ill or yeah, more serious. And so how many times am I going to do that? So am I, am I going to do it in the interest of a longer holiday? Probably yes. Um, am I going to, especially if I have kids, I can, I can imagine a significant change in where and how people spend their holidays. Mm. You know, it's kind of hot. It's hard to holiday right now 
because we're home and you know I'm not moving from my couch to my my kitchen and calling it a holiday mm -hmm. um I, I and if I didn't have work I would have been out that window a lot sooner you know I you, yeah you get the point yeah. so big changes in in how people spend their holidays um I think financially uh, a big wake up call in 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 what you or, or more awareness about what you spend your money on mm -hmm, and and even I, at the end of, end of March or April, went, wow, look at that, the money left, cool. You can go through the <laughs> like, well, but, but that's a strange thing. You, that normal, when you come out of the office and you go, I'm, I'm, should, we have a, should we have a beer? And then, of course, one beer turns into three, so that's six beers between you. You know, what's that, 150 crowns each or something, and you go home, and you don't think anything of it. But at the end of the month, you've mm. 3,000 crowns on, on beers. Now, that doesn't, you know, that's life and, and I, I wouldn't regret spending that. But you become very aware that what of what you're spending your money on because you, when you don't spend it, there's a balance left. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And my last, very last question. Do you think that we will appreciate more what we have, that we won't take the things for granted? You would need to be RoboCop <laughs> not to. You need to be a robot. To, you, you need to be devoid of any emotion or awareness to to not take locking you up, so to speak, for seven or eight weeks and be totally immune to it. You know, and and I think people who've lost their jobs, people who can't earn, people with families, are all going to learn that. Or people who've learned this since day one. I've got gradually used to it, hated it, still hate it, but I'm coping with it. So. That there are people who will, will look back on this, you know, do you remember the times in 2020, which is basically a, of a year yeah. when, when, when we all got locked up in our apartments and wore ski masks and couldn't go outside, you know, and we'll joke, mm. I think about it, but, but the lessons will be, I don't think we'll forget this in a hurry, especially people who've lost family members. Yeah. I mean, that'll be horrible. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope it will be one day, like we will say to our kids, do you, you don't remember, but we, no in the time when exactly i mean this was like a modern day epoch you've seen all the films right so the world ends well this is basically where we nearly got to you know and so and we'll i'm we'll laugh and joke about it but there'll be a serious message you know and we're nearly there we can nearly go out left <laughs> well kenny i can see your excitement you want to get out <laughs> release you from this and i will let you to enjoy the rest of your evening i would Lucy, like thank you very much to you guys and, and thank yeah, you for thank to you. everyone for letting me talk Being rubbish for guest, so remember you've been the first <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and and my, my my i always say this when we do the videos for, with city spy if, if and i genuinely mean this I don't, i'm not it's not an offer of help I, I, i'm not saying i can do it for everyone but if i can help or the company can help and you know people are, are freaking out because they can't get this or can't get that I, I think i've sourced everything i need in my 17 years here then please find me i'm, I'm pretty I'm, I'm not exactly hard to find um and 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 I, i'd love to help and i'm not looking for anything back it's it's the kind of do it do it for the right reasons and even if you want a bit of conversation chat and you know, we can have a virtual beer together uh then i'm i'm happy to help i really i, I genuinely mean that Thank you. Thank you very much, Kenny, for your time. I want to hear cut first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so, and also I thank to all of the people who were watching, who were listening. Maybe some of you were with us the whole time, if you had the yeah. time. <laughs> I'm so, sorry for the mental health impact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you for that. We will continue with this. Actually, from our side, foreigners, we have another uh, stream, online stream on uh, Thursday. It's about coronavirus and real estate. So if you are interested, maybe Ken is interested as well. How is the situation now on the Czech market? If we can expect that the prices will go down or anything related to that. <laughs> Many people like to, like to hear that. You can uh, watch Watch us on Thursday at 5 p.m. here on Facebook as well. And then in one week again, we should have another interview like this we had with Kenny. We will have a new guest next week. So stay Good tuned. Order. And I wish you a beautiful evening. And thank you again, Kenny, for being here with us and sharing your uh, the piece of your life. Your my, my, my rubbish life here in Prague. No, it's fine. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Lucy as well, guys at Foreigners. I'm sure we'll see you guys very soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you and Take see care. you. <laughs>